But I want to invite y'all back to Matthew, the 25th chapter. Matthew, the 25th chapter. My wife over there laughing. <laughs> yeah, she know me too well. <laughs> Matthew, the 25th chapter. And I want to get you to go with me back to verse 14. And I think Brother Willie was drinking. Uh, drinking. <laughs> Reading. Reading. Drinking. Reading from the King James Version. I'm about to slow it down. <laughs> King James Version. I'm going to be reading from the NIV. Okay. Y'all bear with me. All right. You know, I'm a year older today, so I'm going to use that as an excuse. <laughs> that brain. The 25th chapter of Matthew, beginning with the 14th verse. Reading from the NIV, the Bible reads, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one, he gave five bags of gold to another two bags and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five bags of gold went and at once and put his money to work right. and gave five bags more. Mm -hmm. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. All right. But the man who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. Yes, After a long time, the master of, the, of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. Yes. So the man who had received the five bags of gold brought the other five. Uh -huh. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. Right. See, I have gained five more. Mm -hmm. His master replied, well done. Yes, sir. Good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Right. Come and share your master's happiness. Right. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I've gained two more. Uh -huh. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold, he came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid, went out. And here's your gold in the ground. Mm -hmm. See, here's what belongs to you. His master replied, you wicked, lazy servant. Oh. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown mm -hmm. and gather where I have not scattered seed. Yeah. Well, then you should have put my money on deposit yeah. with the bankers. Uh -huh. So that when I have returned, I would have received it back with interest. Uh -huh. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has 10 bags. Right, right. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Uh -huh. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness uh -huh. where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. From this message, y'all, I would like to lift for you a message entitled, Available to be Faithful. <laughs> Available to be Faithful. Okay, it's confession time, y'all. <laughs> At work, we use Skype. Okay? That's one of our communication tools. All right. Some of y'all have heard of this. It's Skype or Instant Messenger or things of that nature where you can you can communicate with your fellow co-workers. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And on this app, you can select your status. That's a mistake, I think. But you can select your status. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And, and, and you got options like available. Yeah. And when you're available, your little light is green. All right. People know that you're available. I can, I can ask them a question. I, I can, I can get, get a hold of them. Uh -huh. Or you can choose a way. Away is, is a little, little yellow. It's yellow light. Mm 
you know, and so on and so on. You can even put I'll be right back. Yeah. You can put I'll be right back. You can put I'm busy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You can put do not disturb. You can even put in a meeting. You know what I mean? Right. And they different colors according to what your status is. Right. Y'all get what I'm saying? But I'm going to confess to y'all. I got a record. Mm -hmm. I got a record of about eight days of showing away. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I was sitting at my desk. <laughs> but I ain't want to be bothered, y'all. I got things I got to do. Y'all know what I'm saying? Don't y'all judge me. <laughs> but I, I, my, my, my light was yellow. I, I'm at my desk, but I'm away. <laughs> Even though, you know, some folks knew I was sitting at that desk. Yeah. But a lot of them didn't know. Uh -huh. And that's what I chose to do right. for them eight days straight to finally my boss man said, look, you need to change that back <laughs> to green. <laughs> <laughs> but with this option on Skype, y'all, it got me to wondering, how often do we do the same thing with our personal relationships? All right, all right. Come on, how often do we do this with our personal relationships? Mm -hmm. You know, we're very protective of our availability. Yeah. Think about it. Being available means losing some me time. All right? right? Yeah. Being available means losing some freedom. All right? Being available can get annoying sometimes. Uh -huh. Y'all with me? Yeah. Sometimes it can feel like we're getting forced into doing something that we don't want to do right. when we make ourselves available. All right. On the other hand, do we view availability when it comes to, how do we view availability when it comes to somebody we care about? All right, all right. It's a little different then, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yes, sir. When, when we care about somebody, there's somebody in our lives that we don't got no problem being available for. All right, all right. We, 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 we go out of our way to ensure that we can be there for them when we care about somebody, don't we? Okay, that's right. What about when it's things that we want to do? Mm -hmm. Things that we want to get involved with, we go out of our way yes, to make sure we're available. Right. Somebody say, let's go drinking. Yeah. I'm available. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Brother Gordon know that sound. <laughs> Somebody say, we're going to go light up. Uh -oh. I'm available. Yeah. Somebody just say the word party. You ain't got to give it out all the way. No. Pop. I'm there. You know what I mean? But that's how we are sometimes. We, get a, we become available for things that we want to do. But the ultimate question is, what option do we choose when it comes to God? Are we showing away this morning? Are some of us showing busy? Are some of us showing God our, our status is do not disturb? Are some of us saying we in a meeting? Or oh, are we here this morning and our status for the Lord is, Lord, I'm available. Amen. Amen. I want you to think about this morning. What is your status when it comes to God? Amen. The Lord said in our text to the good and faithful servant, well done. Yeah. You have been faithful over a few things, not a whole lot of things. Right, a few things is what it says in our text. I will make you ruler. Over many things yes, enter into joy. the joy of the Lord. Yes, Don't we want to hear those beautiful words? Amen. Oh man, listen in our text as, as our Lord and Savior taught this awesome lesson. Our availability, y'all, to be faithful in small things yes, is like telling God, I'm right here when you're ready for me. All right, all right. Just being available to do small tasks, to do little things. It's like telling God, I'm ready. I'm right here. I'm available when you ready for me. Yes, sir. How many of us are saying that with our lives? Okay. That I'm ready for you, Lord. I'm available. I'm available for you to use me, whatever you oh. see fit. Yes, sir. I'm right here. Amen. Available. That's a word, y'all, that <laughs> a lot of times we don't give much thought to it. We don't give much thought to the value of this word. All right. But we, we live in a world where people heavily depend on it. Yes, sir. They heavily depend on 
availability. Yes, sir. When you're interested in dating somebody, Come on, boy. What you want to figure out? Come on. Are they available? Are they available? Yeah. Hey, man, somebody, you better be checking to see if they're available. <laughs> if you want to get with somebody, you better make sure they're that they're available. Yes, sir. Make sure that they ain't going to be distracted with somebody else. Or they already priority, they already somebody, they, they hooked up with somebody else. Yeah. Hey, man, somebody, yeah. you want to make sure that they're available. Right. You should be doing that. When you go to a restaurant, Amen, somebody? On, you want somebody that can wait at your table yes, sir. that's available. Yeah. Amen? Right. You know how it is when you go somewhere to, uh, to sit down and eat and, and you, your server ain't nowhere to be found. All right. All right. Amen? I've been to some restaurants and they, they when you need them, you, you thirsty, you know, I, I need my cup refilled yeah. or I, I drop my fork and I look over there and they like this. <laughs> Huh? You know what that's like, don't you? You want your people to be available. Y'all know how important availability is? Amen, somebody? Y'all know what it's about? I need somebody that can accommodate me. My wife, she, you know, since the pandemic, a lot of us done got fancy now. We, we order our groceries, don't we? Some of us order our groceries. You know, they give you that option. If, if your item isn't available, Give me that, uh, you know, what's your second option? I don't want no second option. <laughs> huh? I don't know about y'all, but don't give me that second option. Because that second option ain't what I wanted. I want what I wanted to be available. I want that thing to be ready. Amen. If you ain't got it, I just don't want nothing. All right, somebody? <laughs> I don't want it at all. I don't want that second option. Don't give me that because you're going to give me what you want. I, I don't want that. I want what I want. And when we're going through something in life, and when we're going through tough times in life, I want that special somebody to be available. Yeah. I, you know, because sometimes we just need to talk, don't we? Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and if you can't be there, just pick up the phone for me. Answer my text. I need you to be available. Yes, Amen. All right. You know, being available involves some trust, don't it? Yes, it does. Being available involves hope. You got to hope that the person that you need to get to is available. Mm -hmm. Being available involves some faith. Yeah. You got to have faith that somebody's available for you, don't you? Right. Being available involves putting yourself out there. Uh -huh. Often that includes being in situations where we don't get to decide how things going to work out. Right. When, you be, when you become available... Sometimes you putting yourself out there, ain't they? Mm -hmm. Especially if you make yourself available for somebody else. All right. They going through a tough time. You don't quite know what they're going through. But you saying, I'm going to be there for you. Uh -huh. You don't know the whole story, but you saying, I'm going to be there. Yeah. I don't get to dictate. I don't get to decide how this thing going to play out. But I'm saying, I'm going to be there for you. Yes, a lot is involved when we make ourselves available. Right. Amen. Yes. And in order to do what we have to, in order to be available, we got to be faithful. Right. And the Lord wants us to be faithful, especially in the small things of life. Amen. How often do we overlook the small things of life? Uh -huh. The Lord wants to be with us and to use the simple everyday stuff in our lives. Amen. Things we take for granted. Right. Them ordinary simple things that we often look over. God can use that for his glory. Amen. Sometimes he uses the simple things in our lives. Right. It ain't got to be the big old stuff that we think about sometimes. Right. No matter what we think our influence or our ability is, God wants us to be available to be faithful. Amen. Being available is a hard thing to do, y'all. Right. Things get to going fast, don't it? Yes, do. Our lives get busy. Mm -hmm. You know how it is. Right. We got people that we love in our life. Yes, that we don't talk to that often because right. we get busy. Yes, we get caught up. Mm -hmm. We go weeks and we ain't checked on one another. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. I know I'm guilty. Yes. We go weeks sometimes. Sometimes those weeks can turn into months. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if we're not careful, it turns into years. Yeah. And, and in the way we used to be available for one another, that it fades away. Because life gets to get, getting uh, so bump, we get so bombarded with things in life. Things go so fast, we get so busy, and we get focused on other things. Amen. And to be honest, there are some things, if we're honest, that we don't give our time to. Uh -huh. We just don't give our time to certain things. And sometimes, sadly, that involves things that God might want us to focus on. Mm -hmm.
Some of us struggle yes, just to be faithful right. over a few things. Right, I don't know about y'all, but isn't it, isn't, it, isn't it something that we become for more focused when we got that big assignment? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I tend to focus more when I got some big assignment. Mm -hmm. When you got that big assignment, oh, that's when you give more effort. Uh-huh. You go out your way for that big assignment. Because right, that big assignment sometimes means big reward. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, or sometimes that big assignment got noticeability. Yeah. I'm going to get noticed for this big assignment. Yes, sir. Or the camera crew might be there <laughs> for this big assignment. I might, get some, I might get some data boys and data girls <laughs> if I do this big assignment. All right. You know what I mean? Sometimes that means money mm -hmm. for that big assignment. Y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but what about those little tasks? Yes, sir. Them little things that we sometimes look over because we figure it don't make that much of a difference. Mm -hmm. Whether it get done or not, because it's small. Yeah. It's minor. Yeah. And let me bring this thing a little bit more home a little more. What happens when we see other folks in the church doing big things? Mm -hmm. And then... We feel like what they're doing is important. What they're doing, they're making a big difference, uh -huh. right? right? Are we less likely to get involved or devote time to something because we feel this is less important? Right. Sometimes I might not want to devote time to, to, to this because it's less significant. Uh -huh. Sometimes we feel like I don't want to devote time to this because sometimes we just think that this thing is meaningless. Mm -hmm. I want you to be careful of that way of thinking. All right. Be careful when you start to think like that. All right. I want you to know the enemy loves when you think like that. Yes, sir. Right. The enemy loves when you get to that point when you start thinking, oh, this thing ain't about nothing. Uh -huh. I do this sometimes and people don't even notice I'm doing it. All right. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes this, this thing that I'm doing is so, it's so small that people, sometimes they overlook it. And the enemy likes to utilize that stance that we get sometimes. Mm -hmm. And you know what he tempts you to do when you get in that, in that mindset, in that mind frame? He want to tempt you to fall back altogether. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. That's what he wants you to just, hey, give up. Yes, sir. Why do anything? Mm -hmm. Huh? You know, if, 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 what this, if what you're doing don't matter much, then don't do nothing at all. all right. And that's when our availability begins to decline. Yes, sir. You know how it was sometimes when you, when you become a new Christian, a new babe in Christ, right. you amped up and ready to go. Yeah. You like a firefighter. You ready to pull out a fire. Where the fire at? Where the fire at? You know what I mean? Yeah. You available all the time then, ain't you? Boy, you get on everybody's nerves. What? I do it. Yeah. I do it. Yeah. Huh, I talk to them folks. They ain't, in the, they ain't in the Lord. Let me go talk to them. You know what I'm saying? I used to wear my friends out. They hated to see me coming. You know what I'm saying? Because I put down the drink. I wasn't smoking with them no more. Mom and daddy, close your ears. And then, I was that friend coming around talking about the Lord. Right. You know what I mean? Amen. I got on folks' nerves. Oh, but then, you know what happened over time? You start to meet people like Michael Brown. Mm -hmm. And you get to watch them up close. All right. and, and then, I remember when I first met Michael Brown, I had hair. <laughs> I think that's why I went gray and went loose. <laughs> I said, man, this guy's amazing. Uh -huh. yeah. And mind you, I met him when I was a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Greg, you know what I'm talking about? I met him when I was a kid. Oh, I'm blown away. This man talking about Greek and Hebrew, what is that? <laughs> All I know about the King James Version. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Breaking the thing down. But I got to grow up and I worked alongside with him personally. Yeah. Seeing all that he does. Right. I met brothers like Brother Gray. All right. Powerful ministers. Yes, and there's so many others right. that are great ministers in the gospel. Yes, and and they, they're so powerful at breaking down God's word. Uh -huh. And then you take a young guy like me, I begin to look at myself and be like, what am I doing? Uh -huh. What am I doing? How do I stack up to that? All right. How does what I'm doing matter when I see people doing great things like this? In the kingdom. Uh -huh. And you know what? The enemy can get in your mind oh, yeah. Yeah. and tempt you to think, what am I doing? Yeah. Am I making any impact in anybody's lives? Yeah. When I see brothers like Terry Gordon, they bringing people to the, to the Lord, 
They, they're bringing people to the water, and I'm, I question, what am I doing? Uh -huh. I can't even get my coworkers to come. Right. You know what I'm saying? I see these people teaching Bible class. What am I doing? Mm -hmm. am, I, am, I, am I contributing? Am I helping? Yes, sir. And the enemy will get you thinking. Yes, you will. You just start to fade back. Come on, man. Yes, sir. You get less and less available. Yes, That's what he wants you. Yes, he does. That's what the enemy loves for you to be. Yes. To feel like you're not making a difference. Yes. He wants you to give up. He wants you to get lax. Yes. Like this, this one talent person that we read about in the text. Uh -huh. What happens when the one talent person is discouraged? Because they're comparing themselves to the person with five talents uh -huh. and two talents. Yes, you can get lax, can't you? When we don't invest what God has blessed us with, we can potentially become, as described in the text, a wicked and lazy servant. Will we utilize what the Lord has blessed us with? Or we do like this, this wicked and lazy servant and start to make excuses. Yes, sir. God wants to use what we are willing to give him. Amen. Amen. The question is, what are you willing to give him? All right, what are we willing to give the Lord? All right. No matter how small or insignificant you might think it is. All right. Do we know the Lord that we serve? Amen. How powerful our Lord is? Amen. He can take that little bit that you give and make something special out of it. Right. Because he wants you to be available. Yes, he wants you to be open to use what he gave you yes, for his purpose, yes, for his glory. That's what, that's what counts, Many of us are familiar with what happened in Matthew 14. Mm -hmm. The story of how the Lord used something small to do something amazing. All right. When he fed the 5,000. Yeah. Jesus was teaching before a multitude of people, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. The people's belly started rumbling. All right. The disciples were like, they'll be all right. <laughs> they can get something to eat on the way home. <laughs> Thanks be to God that, that, that Jesus ain't like us. <laughs> They'll be all right. They can get something to eat on the way home. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for not being like us. <laughs> what did Jesus say? They need not go away hungry. That's right. That's right. Get them something to eat. Yeah. And then if you hop on over to John chapter 6, we get a few more details about the story. All right. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there's a lad. Yeah. There's a boy over here, Jesus. He's here with five barley loaves and two small fish. Yeah. But what are they among so many? Uh -huh. And what did Jesus say? On, Make the people sit down. Mm -hmm. Now there was much grass in the place. So the men sat down in number about 5,000. Right. Jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks, he distributed to them. The disciples and disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted, right. as much as they wanted. Yeah. So when they were filled, he said to his disciples, right. are you listening? Gather up the fragments yeah. that remain so that nothing is lost. Yeah. Therefore, they gather them up yeah. and filled Lord, have mercy. Twelve baskets right. with fragments of the five barley loaves, right. which were left over Amen. by those who had eaten. Yes, Woo! Yes. Can't we learn a lot from this young boy? Yes. Can't we learn a lot from a child? Yes. This child trusted the Lord yes, with the little blessing that he had. Right. He didn't hold it back. No, he he could have said, I'm hungry. I'm going to hold this for myself. I don't trust you, man. I don't know you like that. But this young man gave up what he had. And you know what? What he had, he got from the Lord anyway. Amen, somebody. What are we doing with what the Lord has blessed us with? Are we giving it back to the Lord? Are we letting him multiply the blessings that he has given unto us? Oh, my God. In the book, I want to share this with y'all. And there's a book called The Bible Speaks Today. Mm -hmm. I like what was written about the message of Matthew. And I want to share a bit about, about it. And it pertains to our lesson. It says in this book, there's a fascinating parallel between spiritual and natural laws. Uh -huh. If we've developed our muscles, yeah. our reward is that we can carry heavier burdens yeah. and still feel good while you're doing it. Yeah. 
to those who have given more, who have, who have more is given. And if we lie in bed and do nothing, atrophy. In other words, your body starts wake, or wasting away. That begins to take over. And we find we can do less and less. We lose even the pathetic muscles we once had. It's like that in the spiritual realm. When we act faithfully under the responsibilities the master has entrusted to us, our capacities will grow. If we do nothing with them, our ability to respond and be useful, we diminish to the vanishing point. All right. Good. The image is dynamic and organic. Uh -huh. It is a powerful spur to responsibility in service of the master and a warning against the sloth. Yes, sir. In other words, that's a warning to the lazy. Uh -huh. Amen. Yeah. Whether that is induced by laziness. How many of us are induced by laziness? <laughs> How many of us just refuse to lose, use what the, the Lord has blessed us with? Come on, man. How many of us are induced by fear right. of change? Uh -huh. How many of us just are afraid of change in our lives? Yes, we want things the way they are. We don't want nothing to change. Uh -huh. Or how many of us are just unwilling to take a risk for the Lord? Amen. Knowing that a risk for the Lord is going is to reap rewards. Amen, somebody? Yeah. I don't want us developing the mindset as the church. We have to be accomplishing big goals yes, and going all out in a major way Amen. all the time. Yes, we don't want to develop that mentality. Right. I want us to understand that we can achieve faithfulness in just doing the small stuff sometimes. Right. Meeting the needs of today instead of sitting around waiting on the needs of tomorrow. Uh -huh. What can be done right now? You know, a lot of times we set up these ministries that we're going to look forward to. We're going we're gonna to feed some people in Thanksgiving. Yeah. We're going to do the angel tree, you know, in, in, in December. Right. Those are great tasks. Uh -huh. But what are we doing in the meantime? Right. What are we doing in the between time? Right. Some of us just sit down because we figure I'll wait on the next ministry. <laughs> I'll wait on the next big thing, right? A lot of us, we waiting around that big fish. <laughs> I got to get that big fish. Uh -huh. But guess what? Guppies and goldfish are getting by. <laughs> when you waiting on that big fish, hey man, somebody, you gonna sit up there and be hungry? You can understand that, can't you? Hey man, somebody, <laughs> you better get out there and get the fishing and get busy. That's why we get a net sometimes, don't we? We grab everything. <laughs> you know what? A lot of times that's what we do, don't we? We even do that with our money. Come on, boy. I wait on that big check before I give. Yeah, see. I wait on that Christmas bonus. Come on, see. Guess what? We still need lights. Come on, yeah. We still need air and heat, don't we? Yeah. Hey, man, somebody. Come on, boy. We still need power up in this building. Yeah. We still need money, don't we? Yes, and then, but we get that mentality. I wait on the big check. Yeah. I get that bonus coming up. I'll give big then. Yeah. You know what I mean? Some of us we do that with our time too. Yeah. Man. You know, I ain't got time right now. Uh -huh. Brother Gordon, I ain't got time. I, I, feel, but I ain't got time right now. I, I would help y'all, but I ain't got time right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll wait till I get some time off. I got some time coming up. Then I could be more devoted then. You know what I'm saying? You see how the enemy works on us? That's what he want. He get us focused on the big thing. But what about the small stuff? That's some thought, small things that we neglect because we're looking for the big thing. I'll wait on it. But then you got smaller jobs, there's smaller goals that still need to be met, aren't they? Right, they, can be, they can be accomplished with just a little bit of your spare time. Uh -huh. We got some stuff that we can do that don't take all day. Right. It don't take nothing but a little bit of time. Right. Amen. 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 Aunt Viv and my wife went to go help Brother Greg with his clients. Okay. It didn't take all day, did it? No, it didn't. Just a little bit of time. Right. A little bit of spare time. But I, I, I'm going I'm to beat, uh, beat up on us a little bit more. Come on, brother. Because I'm guilty of this, y'all. Sometimes we, we, we see that, that, uh, uh, that vacation time uh, accruing. Yeah. That thing sure look good. <laughs> y'all, you know what I'm talking about. Yes, and you don't want to touch it. Because you want it to be available for what you want it to be. Ooh, Lord of mercy. <laughs> the enemy loves that, y'all. He wants you to, don't, don't touch that yet. 
Because you don't know, you might get some time off and be able to go somewhere, baby. You might better do something you want to do. Let me stop. Y'all don't want to hear this. <laughs> Being faithful to today's needs open the door to bigger and better things for tomorrow. The Lord will bless us to move on, move on up, and we'll be given the chance to be faithful towards bigger things. But it all starts with small sacrifices. The small dedication, the small responsibilities. And then if we look at the beginning of this chapter of Matthew 25, Jesus told a story of the parable of the ten virgins. Yes, mm-hmm. Y'all know that story? Yeah. At the beginning of the patch, uh, chapter, Jesus spoke of those ten virgins. Yes, what was the point that he was teaching? The importance of being ready. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Be ready so you ain't got to get. Ready. Y'all know it. Right. See, the wise disciple makes long-term provisions ahead of time. So there won't be no need of last minute scrambling. Right. That's what happened to them five virgins. They weren't ready, wasn't it? They weren't ready. They didn't have their oil like the other five did. Right. The other five came prepared. Yes, sir. When the bri- bridegroom came coming, uh, the, the, the mother five, they were short, wasn't it? Yes, well, they started asking to the other five, can we get some oil from y'all? And what'd they say? Nope. <laughs> you don't want to be caught short out there, do you? Amen, somebody. And see that parable that he talked about, about the, about the ten virgins, it purposefully, purposefully transitions right into this one. In today's text, Jesus goes right from the importance of readiness to the importance of being faithful. Amen. Being ready and being faithful go hand in hand. Yes, Amen. Right. And faithfulness at its core involves using what God has entrusted to us to advance his kingdom in the world. It means making a spiritual profit with the deposit God has entrusted to each disciple. And I'm going to let James take us on out. And the lesson will be yours. In James chapter 2, verse 14, the Bible says, What does it profit, my brethren? If someone said he has faith, but does not have works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have works. Mm-hmm. Show me your faith without work, your works. And I'll show you my faith by my works. Yes, you believe that there is one God, yes, sir. you do well. Yes, sir. Even the demons believe yes, sir. and tremble. Right. But do you want to know, right. oh foolish man, yeah. that faith without works is dead? Yes, Was not Abraham our father justified by works yes. when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Yes, sir. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect and the scripture was fulfilled, which says Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. How many of us can be called a friend of God? You see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. Amen. What am I simply saying today? God wants people that are ready. Yes, sir. And not just ready, but he wants people that are ready yes. and available right. to be faithful. Amen. Do we fit that description today? Right. Are we ready for the Lord's return? Right. And are we being faithful in the meanwhile? Amen. The Lord is coming back one day, y'all. Will we have made use of our talents? Or will we be found wicked and lazy and not ready? In order to be ready, you must obey the gospel. Yes, sir. In order to be ready, you must hear the word of God. All right, brother. You might be here today and you've been hearing the word of God for a long time. All right, but we can't just have faith in God's word. You got to act upon yes, sir. that faith. Amen. Amen. Faith was our works. It's dead. Mm-hmm. So when you hear it, you got to be willing to believe it. Yeah. 
we believe in a Lord that loves us Amen. in spite of our sin, yeah. in spite of our rebellion, yes, in spite of our turning away from him, we have an almighty God that loves us, yeah. loves us so much that he gave us the best gift yes, that the world has ever seen, yeah. and that is himself yes, in the form of Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Right. He came to this earth, not just he came, but he lived a life free of sin. Do we understand how awesome that is? That's just as much a part of the plan as his death. Oh, he lived faithful all the way unto death. And he died a cruel death. Amen, somebody. Oh, man, don't just know the story. Do something about it. Oh, he died for the sins of the whole world. But he didn't stop there. Oh, he got up on the third day. That's awesome. That's as significant as the rest of it. He got up. On the third day, he lives evermore, right. went back home yeah. to prepare a place. Yes, He's coming again one day. Yeah. Oh, and we want to be ready. Yeah. How do you get ready? You believe that you'd be willing to repent yes, of your past sins. Yes, what that means is you doing it your way ain't going to work. Yes, it ain't never going to work. I don't care if you were living in Groundhog Day like the movie, and each day repeated, and each day repeated, and each day repeated. You know what? You're going to be wrong, and you're going to be wrong, and you're going to be wrong if you keep doing it your way. You got to stop living according to your way and be willing to live according to the Lord and do the things his way. That's repentance. That's where you turn around, not make a, a what is it, 360, and you right back where you started. You want to make a 180 and go in the other way. Yeah. And that way is to the Lord. Yes, Be willing to repent and not just repent. Yes. Confess the sweetest name on mortal tongue. Yes. And that is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Yes. Be willing to confess Christ Jesus. Yes. Believe him. Yes. Believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of those that diligently yes. seek him. Yes. And after you've done that, after you've confessed Christ Jesus, be willing to go down yeah. in that water. All your sins are washed away. Isn't that awesome? Everything dirty and sinful you've ever done, right. the Lord washes it all away. Yes, he don't bring it up no more. Oh. You might try to bring it up, yeah. but God don't bring it up no more. Right. Amen. Amen? And then after that, be willing to live faithful yeah. unto death. Right. Then you're ready. Yes, sir. Then you're ready. Yes. And I know just like you, you like me, you wish, I wish when I came up out of that wall the Lord came right on back. Come on, brother. But it don't work like that. Yes. You know why? Because the Lord has some work for us to do. Yes. Amen. Yes, the Lord wants, to, wants uh, other people to be saved as well. Yes. How greedy we going to be if we just want to be the one saved. Yes. Amen. Amen. This good news of the gospel is for every living soul, for every living creature. Because once you die, ain't no more chances. It's all over. The Lord wants us to be available so that he can use us. He can utilize the gifts he has given us to save other precious souls. Amen, somebody. That's why we live faithful under death. And that's why the Bible said the harvest is plentiful. But the laborers are few. We, the, the harvest is plentiful of souls that have yet to come to Christ. Amen. But the laborers are unavailable. All right. The red light is on. All right. yes, sir. They're saying I'm away right now. Mm -hmm. Stand on your feet this morning. We need some Christians that are going to be available to be faithful. All right. That means being available of everything that God has blessed with us. In our grasp, yes. even the small things, church. Mm -hmm. Don't overlook the small things. Right, you can help somebody real quick. It don't take long. That's right. That's right. Just like if you see somebody on the side of the road, I know you got to be careful. Yeah. But if you see somebody on the side of the road, if you know how to change the tire, yeah. change the tire. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. It don't take long. No, sir. And if you're here today and you need prayer, ask for prayer today. Amen. Turn that light on and be green for the Lord. Yes, sir. Be available for the Lord. Right, if you need prayer, ask for prayer. And if you have yet to give your life to Christ, do it today. Yeah. Do it today. Don't put it off. We're going to have a verse of a song. Mm -hmm. If you need to respond. Mm -hmm. I made up my day. Mm -hmm. 